I pray that you'll be pleased in what you see and what you hear from you. And whether I pray for you tonight, Father, that speak to our hearts, Father. Open our eyes, Father, as your word enters our ears and our hearts, Father. Touch us, Father. I pray for you that I, I pray that this word will be a breakthrough in our lives, Father, so that we apply it, Father, for your glory and your praise. Holy Spirit of God, take over. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready for the word of God? So many of God's glory. If you're ready for the word of God, thank you, Jesus. Can I say, the Lord put on my heart to start a new series. Right? Every Thursday, says the Gerasa Kacha series. And what, it's, uh, what we're going to do is just uh, she asked the parables that can ask with Jesus. Uh, there's a lot of parables. There's over 35. We're not going to go over 35 weeks, but uh, as the Lord leads, she asked the parables that can ask with Jesus. I cannot shut in up. Parables, uh, they, they, they put it this way. Uh, we know parable is a, a, an earthly story. An earthly story. You see little Jesus, which one that you can relate to. You see fishing, you see uh, uh, farming, you see uh, manus. So he uses an earthly story for a spiritual meaning. For a spiritual meaning, a, a moral. Like I said before, there's a moral to the story. Spiritually, it uh, has a moral to it. I, uh, she tells us know how Jesus always on the parables, but study some that's the build on, on the parables, and I'll tell you why. The Burandale Pharisees and Sadducees show us as we know how. And they already knew, they cheap a channels on the Jesus. Whatever Jesus would say, they already had their thoughts made up. They weren't gonna believe it, they weren't gonna listen. So Jesus, for oh God in his mercy, tell us do I in parables. So see, then I don't judge my do judgment in any. Because instead of them not just listening and judging, they would just wouldn't understand it. Anymore. They wouldn't understand it. But the people that would understand it is the ones that would not only listen, but wrote in us. Wrote in us. What did that mean? What did that mean? What the, uh, let, me, let, me, let me listen to that again. Let me hear it again. Let me focus on that. What did he say? And the ones that really were searching for the meaning, they would get it. And when they would get it, they would grow spiritually. They would produce something. They would produce something. I, the name, or the word, not name, but the word parable in itself, this parable, we know, alongside. Alongside. So alongside the early story is a spiritual meaning. You can't believe I, uh, uh, what comes to mind is we got son of a ball by on the bottom of our guy, I does. And I see this because she she does on Supasaputi. And we'll give us some of the point of our lucky guy shit because I don't know that I go by the Zumalo Gajo or something, and what was good that she did. Because you're not paying attention what's alongside. We'll give up our driving. I cheat us with Goji, what's alongside? Our mind is just straight, but sometimes we don't even know how we got what we got. But we're just driving. I saw this to turn the lane, and because of the guys, it was right away, I'll give me a horn. I took kind of teach you because you didn't see what was alongside. And that's what a parable is. If you're not paying attention to what's alongside, all you're going to get is an urban story. All you're going to get is an urban story. That's not what it was meant for, Kat. It was meant so you can get what's alongside. The spiritual one. I got that one, that short parable, I did with Jesus. It's in three of the, of the Gospels. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's in Luke. Matthew and Mark speak of it, and when they start the story, they say something that a, a large crowd was following Jesus. But tonight we're going to read it from Luke, and I want to talk to you about Luke a little bit, because the Luke not a follower of Jesus. He was a follower of Jesus, but he physically didn't follow Jesus. Luke was a Greek doctor. He was a Gentile. And the, the scholars say that somebody hired him to find out about Jesus. I know Charles and he was investigating about Jesus. And in that, he found the gospel. In that, he got, uh, started to, to be more and more and more. And he got in touch with Paul and then Paul and ministered with Paul. But Luke never, like us, never followed Jesus. He was just somebody that wanted to know what's alongside. 
wanted to know the spiritual. And in that he grew, and in that he produced. What did he produce? He wrote the Gospel of Luke. He also wrote Acts, which is over 25% of the New Testament. But because of Paul, who told on the Colossians, who told us the greetings from uh, uh, Luke, the physician, uh, he's a doctor. We come to, to know that he's a doctor. Because he's a doctor, Rizzo, he gives a little more detail. Because he's a, let's say, an investigator, an investigative reporter who show questions, I love answers, I, uh, he's writing it down. He gives a little more detail than the rest of the Gospels. You'll find out later what I mean. But I got on the Luke 8, on the Luke chapter 8, and we'll start at the chapter 4, and it goes on to 8, but I'm just going to give you an oversight. I don't want to stay long, I'm just going to give you an oversight. I can't tell you about round, about soil. I, it's called the parable of the sower or of the farmer. Sower, so no discussion of seeds. So listen. I will tell Jesus, go, oh, farmer, of money, I should ask the loser, and some fell on the path, the driveway, the pass. Some fell on rocky ground. Some fell on ground that had weeds. And some fell on good ground. Now, I want you to understand something. There's only two grounds here. Even though Jesus talks about four, there's really only two. And this is the two. There's one that produces. There's one that grows. There's one that receives and grows and has production. I bought old also. And then there's the ground, no matter how many are there, there's the ground that doesn't. So Jesus, I want to go to the pathway. I want to go to the pathway. I want to go to the weeds. And afterwards, who said is the disciples? See, they wanted to know what does it mean? What was alongside that story? I push that uh, the disciples. What did it mean? And this is probably the easiest way to. to to preach because Jesus explains it. So I don't got to explain much tonight. So Gaga, on the Luke 8, we'll take it right now from uh, 11, Josh. Verse 11. I think someone told Jesus, tell them the night, and we told, this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. And so it's not what that's God's word. Very simple. That seed is God's word. I am his son if I were it. Oh, Pastor Sufaba, no. Con doni a sundaze, what about the best seed? Tutti di nostra seed. You were given seed. And if your bag is empty, Luke de Perella Vendela Jav, because you should always have seed in your bag. You should always have seed in your bag, it should be. They shall not strike the shoes. Can I cause good ground shooting? Can I cause just any ground shooting? You should always not that the old pastor won't do the pastor that's know the word of God. No, God forbid. You're the farmer. Because you know the word of God, because you've met Jesus Christ, because you believe to some of those guys should is a son side. And that seed is the word of God. Go ahead. The seed that fell on the path represents those who hear the message and only have the, the, the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. Should it be some I want him on us. This is just the world. Want him on us will come up. That's not for me. Let's go back That's good enough for me. Just people that want to see that. I know the swallow, I show the corn will make a bojil to swallow that they're good enough. And they don't need Jesus. They don't need the word. They don't need the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. They don't need it. So one more time, I don't need it. I have a little swallow, I show the food that's the moon side of And they don't believe. And then there's the other ground. The seed that fell on Rocky Saw represents all who hear the message and receive with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while and they fall away. And when they face temptation, go ahead. 
When they face temptation, the seed, uh, okay, when they face temptation, they fall away. Go back. They go, oh, go down, she looks like I got a rocky ground. They deny roots. Deny roots. It doesn't take roots. They receive it with joy. Oh, check out, but they look great. They look like the, the, they got it. They're excited. Right away, 25 that I talk. Right away, they start using the Christian lingo. I'm blessed. But there's no root. So see, why is there no root? Because they're not looking for what's alongside. They don't care what's alongside. They're just punching the card. I've been cut up. Your son for an hour and a half. Then they go over the hood. She hung them two, three songs. And then they go about their life. That's that soil. That's not going to produce anything. That's not going to grow. Producing, you know, kind of, there's a lot of soap. I just, I do out like Nobody throws in a shrimp for bait for his own and expects to get that shrimp back and they're happy with it. You expect that I should disobey in this production to produce my babo macho. And God is no different. Well, tell that good seed, Robert, so you can sow the seed to produce for the kingdom of heaven. But if we're that rocky soil and we fall kind of a temptation because it's we, we receive it with joy, but there's no root. We really don't care so much only one As long as it makes us feel good, but when it gets a little tough, I'll move on. Go ahead. And the seed that fell among thorns represents those who hear the message. But all too quickly, the message is crowded by the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life. And they never grow into maturity. And there's that ground. There's that ground that they get it. It falls on them, they get it. They hear it. But I feel life. I don't have time for it. I don't have time to grow. No time to pray. No time teaching others in God. No time to spend with Him. No time because I've got to do something. The kids got to get married. This has got to happen. I got to get. I got. I got a goal. Who's not good? Who's not half of some of the friends? Who's not half of all? And there it never grows. Why? Because that's the ground that uh, never becomes mature. As I said, what about mature? All through the Bible, the word mature is perfect. That word perfect is holy. And that's what God's looking for. Maturity. Chi barolo del glati at his son glati. No. Nobody does that. Nobody expects the glati at his son glati. Well, del rolo maturity. Go ahead. And the seed that fell on good soil. Well, it represents honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. <laughs> they, they cling to it. Jerusalem will cling. Every time it moves up, when she clings to something, she is it. Ever, ever, did you ever experience a grata that clings to your leg because just stopped and they want to go with you and it clings to your leg? She gets it in. I almost, I see good soil. They cling to the word of God. They cling to God. They cling to Jesus. Well, that is what I If it's a choice between money and God, I cling to God. If it's a choice between church and doing something else, I cling to God. If it's a choice between the world and God, I cling to God. That's good soil. That produces. What does it produce? It produces a huge harvest. What does that mean? That little that you're doing that you don't think means anything. You're just making the decision to cling to God. It's going to produce because someone's going to see that you cling and they're going to cling and they're going to cling and that they're going to cling and that's the harvest that God is looking for. That's the soil I want to be. Every one of us here got a choice tonight. What soil are we? Like I said, there's four that 
They look like Jesus. They start out looking like Jesus. Spiritual, strong, saying the right words, doing the right things. The right lingo, hanging around with the right people. They look like the lily. They look like the rose. But I want you to see something. This is early in Jesus' ministry. Later on, about a year, year and a half, Jesus dies. Jesus stood on the earth for two years. I got plus you glad to make your father this who knows, maybe a year and a half, two years. Jesus dies and they put him in a tomb. Who knows what happened after that? He rose. Get up, right? He got up. Joshua, go up. This is the end of Luke. This is the end of Luke. Go to Luke 24. And we'll start at 8. But we'll start at 9, Josh. Now this is the, the women that went to the tomb to prepare Jesus or to watch Jesus by the Shabbat. And when they went there, they didn't find the body. It was in, the tomb was empty. And the angel said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? When they heard that, they ran back to the disciples. But I want you to see now who Luke talks about. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. They're excited. He's risen. So because of Jesus happened, he got up. He's alive. Go ahead. It was Mary. Mary Magdalene, the same person that was there when Jesus was giving his parable. She, she supported him. That's the story. That's the story. Why? Because she knew she was rebellious and God did something in her life. And that she found good ground with Mary. Because not only is she there in the beginning, she's there at the end. Then there's Joanna. Joanna knows that God gives grace. And when we're rebellious, we know that God gives grace. From beginning to end, we're there in the good, in the bad. When they found Jesus not there, it wasn't just excitement, by the way. They were worried. In the good and the bad, they're there. Joanna supported him in money and time in the very beginning. And even at the end, she's there. Luke describes her. Luke recognizes her. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Where is Joanna? Susanna. Susanna. Where is Susanna? Where is Susanna? The one, the lily, the rose, the one that looks like Jesus. The Bible says that there are other women there. And if she was there, Madame Moyeti Mosca on some of the Bible. But for some reason, she's not recognized by Luke. If she was there, for some reason, she's not recognized by Luke. And good ground doesn't go unrecognized. It produces. Mary and Joanna, they didn't go unrecognized. They produced. They went back to the disciples. They told Jesus is alive. They told someone else. Those disciples told someone else. And you're here tonight. Because Mary and Joanna knew that they were rebellious. God gave them grace. He's alive. And that's the message. That's the gospel. You're here tonight. That's the production. That's what good work produces. They got a hundred times, a thousand times what they put in. God got back. Why? Because thousands of years later, you're here today because of their message. What a harvest. What a great harvest. Where's Susanna? Where's Susanna? If she was there, Robert, she goes unrecognized. If she was there, we don't hear of any production. We don't hear of any producing. If she was there, Luke doesn't recognize her. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the ground that's unrecognized. I want to be the ground that they come in my they come. Nice, the production jumping about. So the little devil in this will die. Oh my goodness, I want to be that way. And then put on my little devil, maturity. And then I got my little devil, got my little devil. And then this building will be filled. And then this city will be on fire for God. Because we're going to grow a great harvest.
because we all know we were rebellious and God gave us grace and we're in it from beginning to the end. Amen. Father God, I thank you for tonight and for them. I thank you, dear Lord, because there's no favoritism, dear Lord. The same ground that received the seed that didn't grow, that same seed fell on the ground that did grow. Dear Lord, if there's a heart tonight, whether it be stony or whether it be dear Lord, uh, full of weeds, dear Lord, or whether it just be a path, dear Lord, I'm telling, that's not for me. Lord, tonight that can change. That can change, Lord. And your word is like a hammer, Then Lord, you pick out the much you want, that you're like the, the gardener that, pu that, that prunes, Lord. The trees, Lord. Like, you can till the ground, Lord. To be them, Devil, that you tilt the ground and to go to another year. Devil, tonight, Devil, that I pray that if there's any hearts that are not producing, change that tonight, Father. From beginning to end, Devil, let us be a part of your ministry, not only in finances, not only in our time, Devil, but to proclaim your gospel that you died and you rose. And just like Mary and just like Devil, Joanna, whatever, we will produce a huge crop, a harvest for your glory, for your glory and your praise. I thank you, Father, for tonight. In Jesus' name, touch our hearts, God. Touch our hearts, God. May your seed tonight find good ground. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.